Welcome Knitters, I'm Jana with Pearl Together. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. I'm happy that you found us. This is an updated version of the customizable toe up sock series where we're gonna knit socks together from the toe up and you're gonna be able to customize it to fit your feet specifically or that of your recipient. Okay, so to start with, you wanna choose your yarn. Let's talk about that for a minute. Most of the time, a fingering weight yarn is designed to be the weight that you'll knit getting usually between seven to nine stitches per inch, depending on the needles that you choose. So this is where swatching becomes important because every knitter knits a little bit differently. My gauge will be different than yours and that will be different than your friend. So swatching is important. Now, a lot of people, when you're knitting from the toe up, people will use the toe as the actual swatch. I'm gonna go ahead and just knit the toe because it's small enough that it's not a big deal if you need to rip it out and start again. If it's not the gauge and the density of the fabric that you prefer, it's totally fine. If you want to knit a proper swatch in the round, check out my speed swatch video in the upper corner there. I'll also put a link in the video description down below. So a speed swatch just simulates knitting in the round without having to actually knit all the way around that many stitches. So the point of swatching in the round is because when you swatch back and forth, your knit stitches and your purl stitches will be slightly different because a purl stitch, you know how you bring the yarn to the front, that uses a little bit more yarn than does a knit stitch. So that affects your overall gauge. So it's important to actually swatch the way that you'll be knitting whatever garment we're talking about, socks included. So check out that speed swatch video or use the toe as your swatch. That's totally fine as well. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do though is measure your foot or that of your recipient. So for a toe up sock, I will begin by measuring the ball of your foot. If you're not sure what I mean by that, the ball of your foot, like pretend these are your toes, the ball of your foot is right here where your toes bend, okay? So measure that. So for example, if the ball of your foot measures a circumference of nine inches, and you have done your swatch and you measured your gauge, so you know how many stitches per inch you have. Let's say you have eight stitches per inch or nine stitches per inch. You multiply that by the circumference. So eight stitches per inch times nine inches around your foot would be 72. So that's if you want the sock to fit exactly the width or the circumference that it is. A lot of people like a little bit of negative ease. Now, negative ease just means that the fabric is gonna stretch a little bit and be more snug. So for example, I've got a tiny sock started here, and that just means it's gonna have a little elasticity and it's gonna be a little bit tighter than the actual measurement of my foot. So a lot of people prefer five to 10% negative ease. I don't like a lot of negative ease, maybe 5%. Generally, I'll just round down to whatever is a convenient multiple for the stitch pattern I've chosen. So for example, if we're using that 72 stitches for the foot number, maybe I'll go down to 68 or maybe 64 even. So 64 would be about eight to 10% negative ease and that's totally fine. Again, when choosing your yarn, wool sock yarn that has some nylon is preferred by most people. So you might look for a blend of wool and nylon or polymade or whatever it's called nowadays. Um, you'll often find an 80-20 mix, 80% wool, 20% nylon or 75-25 or, or whatever. Often that's preferable for durability. Nylon is more durable. That's not to say that you can't knit 100% wool socks. You absolutely can. You just need to know that they're probably not gonna hold up as well. Machine washed, you may wanna hand wash them, but if you want to eliminate nylon and plastic from your life, absolutely knit 100% wool socks. Just be mindful that you'll need to take care of them appropriately. So the yarn that I'm using for this is the Unique Sock Kit by Earth Yarns, that's U-R-T-H. There's a link down below. That's an affiliate link where you can get a hold of lots of different colors of cool stripey sock yarn like this. So go check that out. That's from Needlepoint Joint in Ogden, Utah, one of my favorite yarn stores on the planet. So you're helping out the channel if you shop through that link and they're fantastic people. So just look for something with a blend that is fingering weight. And what that means is usually on the label, it will say seven to nine-ish stitches per inch. That just refers to the diameter and the thickness of the yarn. Okay. 
I'm looking here to see my notes so I don't forget to tell you anything. So measure your, the ball of your foot and we'll do some math. And if you need some help with that, uh, drop a comment down below or in the Facebook or Ravelry groups. And I'm happy and lots of people, there's lots of experienced knitters in the groups. Someone will help you out or I'll pop in and, and check comments and questions as well. Okay, so let's get started with the Turkish cast on. That's what I like to use for toe up socks. If you're unfamiliar with that, um, no problem. I'm gonna walk you right through it, pun intended. So we're gonna do this really slow, step by step. We'll start with the cast on and we'll do the increases for the toe. I like to use a the Seam Free Rounded Toe by Lynn Ashton. It's a method, not uh, necessarily a pattern, but a, a recipe. So it just creates a nice rounded toe rather than that kind of trapezoidal wedge shape. This is just the one I prefer. If you have a method that you like, go ahead. Um, but I'm just gonna walk you through the way I knit a toe-up sock. Before we get started, I wanna tell you about an opportunity that you would have to support this channel and help keep the videos coming every single week. Check out the my page on patreon.com forward slash pearl together. For a small monthly pledge, you're supporting the channel and helping keep projects and videos coming every single week. Absolutely appreciate that. And you can see what I'm offering for perks for patrons only, like knit alongs, knit virtual knit night, discounts off classes, things like that. So go check it out over at patreon.com forward slash pearl together. All right, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start with this cake of yarn. This is from the Unique Sock Kit from Earth Yarns. Unique, spelled like that. Cat hair included, not included, by Earth Yarns. So this was sent to me to try out by Emery at Earth Yarns. So that's fantastic. You can see there's two, it comes with two matching, matching cakes. Now I'm doing something a little different. I'm gonna knit this one from the inside and the other sock I'm gonna knit from the outside just because that's how we thought it would look cool. My daughter wants things kind of reversed for each sock, so they'll be fraternal twins. But you could certainly knit each one exactly the same, and that's the point of the kit, is that it would match. Um, we're just not really matchy-matchy kind of people, but that's totally fine. You could do that. So I put a link down below where you can get a hold of this. The color that I'm using on for this uh, video tutorial is color 64, and it's awesome. So... As I've said, one advantage to knitting toe up is that you can use all the yarn and that's what my daughter wants. So here we go, Turkish cast on. I am using size one or 2.25 millimeter needles. This is, these are Chiagu, Chiagu, I'm not sure how you say it. Somebody will correct me in the comments. Um, I'm using these 2.25 needles and this is approximately a 32 inch cable. Maybe it's 40. I forget. But anyway, this is what I prefer for Magic Loop and this is how I'm going to do the Tur Turkish cast on. So we're just going to start by making a simple slip knot. Um, and I do have a video on the channel uh, showing the Turkish cast on in a little bit slower and you can go and, and check out that brief tutorial video if you want to have some uh, slower step by step but so I've just put on the slip knot and if you're going to be picky about using every little bit of your yarn make the slip knot as close to the end of the tail as you can you just want to leave enough of a tail that you can weave that in on the inside of your toe of your sock later on now this is super kinky because it's been all mashed up inside the cake so normally I knit from the outside of the cake that's just my personal preference so it doesn't collapse on itself and I know you can buy those little knit uh, cake cozies that keep everything together. I just have never done that. So, all right. So you want to put both of your needles together and have the tips to the left. And I have my slip knot on the top needle. And I'm just going to kind of hold this tail out of the way in my right hand. So on the top needle, and then I'm going to come from behind rather than over the top like this. I'm going to come from behind here and I'm going to wrap as many times around as half the number of stitches that I want to begin with. So for me, for the pattern that I like to use, I'm going to wrap 14 times. So I'm starting out with a total of 28 stitches. Okay, so we're going to come down from the bottom and go up and over. That's one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so that's 14 all the way over and around. And you have your working yarn coming off the bottom now. So I'm just going to double count, double check, not counting the slip knot there. I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Okay, so maybe I need to go one more time or maybe I overlapped something here. Let me check again. Not counting the slip knot, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. All right, I do have 14. What you want to do now is hang on to this and simply rotate everything 180 degrees. So now everything's pointed off to the right and your working yarn's coming off the top. Okay. Then what you want to do is pull, th if you're using magic loop as opposed to two circulars or double points, pull through the bottom needle now and curl that around so you can begin to knit. Okay. Go ahead and put that into the first strand. Then get a hold of your working yarn, which is still coming off the top. And I'm an English knitter thrower, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap around and just knit right into that. So go across knitting into each wrap. And I do this fairly slowly because I don't want anything to come off and I'm pinching everything pretty tightly on the left side. So we're just gonna knit across all 14 stitches and not the slip knot, which will be on the bottom. So you'll see what that looks like here in a minute when I get to the other end. And I'll double count everything because I'm not so far into it that it would be that big of a deal to unwrap everything and start over if I have the wrong count. So we'll just make sure that we really do have 14, not counting the slip knot. And I'm just being careful to un twist anything that may be wrapped overlapped okay and then there's the slip knot which we'll get rid of here shortly but let's double check our count two four six eight ten twelve fourteen good not counting the slip knot okay so now what you what i like to do at this point is rotate everything again 180 degrees okay and i'm gonna inch this back through and this seems a little fiddly, but then I'm going to pull through the bottom needle because that's going to become our working needle now. Okay. And now is when we'll go ahead and um, drop the slip knot off that top needle. And you can just let that fall behind. That's fine. And we're going to work this around and knit back into our first stitch. Making sure our working yarn is behind as we normally would. Okay, so now you're just going to go ahead and knit back into all of the stitches going across. So again, I have 14 stitches on each needle for a total of 28. And I'm going to pull the bottom needle again and turn again. I'm going to turn 180 degrees, pull the bottom needle through. So it's my working yarn. Now I've got my foundation started pretty well, but I like to go ahead and knit across each needle one more time. So I've done it a total of two times after the wrap. So I've done knitted four rows after I've done that initial get started wrap. So go ahead and knit across each needle one more time and then you'll have a really good foundation for any sock pattern that you want to do. We are going to use the rounded seam free toe method by Lynn Ashton. I'll put the link to that down below. So if you haven't already printed that or have it on a knit companion or, or an, another you know, screen, another window of a tab, whatever to refer to, you'll want to do that so that we can go ahead and, and do that method. Now, the difference in what she does compared to what I do is I prefer the lifted increase, which I learned from Kat Bordy. Um, she was a brilliant knitter who unfortunately passed away last year. Anyway, I use her lifted increase method for left and right leaning lifted increases and I'll be showing you that but I also have a video specifically about that that I'll put in the comment or in the video description down below where you can see that more easily with multicolored yarn that's really easy to see um, but if you just want to stick with me here I will be showing you as well so here I am pulling through the bottom cable again turning this 180 degrees so we can carry on now, we have our little baby toe started. Isn't it cute? 
So you can see that doing the Turkish cast on gives us a perfectly seamless beginning. A lot of people prefer toe up socks for this reason. They don't necessarily want to do the Kitchener at the end and that's totally fine. I in general prefer cuff down, um, but there are some times when I want to knit toe up and this is one of them. So the first thing I'm gonna do, if you're following along with the seam free rounded toe up method, I want to knit the first, we're, we're on row one here where we're gonna knit the first stitch and we want to do a lifted increase. So we're gonna make one by using a lifted increase. Now what I'm gonna do is go under here and grab this leg from the stitch below. So we have the stitch on our needles and then we have the stitch below. And I'm gonna go grab that without splitting anything and I'm gonna lift it up and put it on the working needle. Then I'm just gonna knit right into it, okay? So that's gonna be an increase that leans to the right. And we're gonna go ahead and knit across the center stitches and do the same thing on the other end, but I'm gonna make the stitch lean to the left. Now again, I do have a video that shows how to do this in slower and more detail. So check that out if you're unfamiliar with right and left leaning lifted increases. So I'm stopping one stitch before the end. Now I've knitted a stitch already, so I'm gonna go down to the stitch below the row, the one I just knitted. So I'm gonna go all the way down to this lighter blue strand right here, lift that up, and you can tell that that looks like a twisted stitch, doesn't it? So I'm gonna knit right into the back of that to correct the orientation or the, the mounting of the stitch. And then just let, knit the last one. Okay, so we've increased st two stitches on that first needle. So I pulled through the cable on the bottom. I'm turning, turning 180 degrees, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through, adjust my magic loop. I also have a video on using magic loop if this is a little confusing. You can check that out as well. Don't start knitting with the tail. And I'm gonna do the same thing again, knit the first one. This is a right leaning increase, so I'm just gonna go down to the stitch in the row below, lift up the right hand leg, put it up on my working needle, my left needle, sorry, I guess the right one's the working needle, huh? Put it up on the left needle and just knit into it normally. And then knit across the rest of the stitches until you get to one stitch left. So we're lifting the stitch leg from the row below. If you're So if you're looking here, we're lifting this one. However, when we go across, we're knitting another row, aren't we? So that's why when you get to the left leaner, you have to knit this stitch first. We want this leg right here, this leg right here, but we're gonna knit this stitch first because we wanna lift the left side of it, which actually is this one. So lift that up, knit into the back of it, so you correct the stitch orientation, and knit the last stitch. Okay, turn your work. Now, we are increasing rapidly here. So I shouldn't say turn your work, I should say rotate your work, because technically turning your work would be like this. We're rotating, not turning front to back. So we're rotating our work. So sorry about that miss misinterpretation. Okay, we want to increase again, but obviously we can't do that. We can't increase right away again because we already pulled up the stitch from the row below. That's why these two are so close together. So we need to knit past that and pull a stitch, pull from a stitch that we haven't used before. So that's why on row two, you're knitting three. Then you'll do your increase where we're gonna lift the leg from the row below and knit right into that. So that's why you knit three first, so you're not, because you can't pull the same leg over and over, right? Knit all the way across until you have three stitches left. And then we'll do the same left leaning lifted increase, where we go down to the row two below and knit into the back of that. Okay, again, if you find this um, going a little too fast, check out the video that I have specifically dealing with left and right lifted increases. Meanwhile, we're just gonna carry on this way, uh, following the rounded toe method that you're reviewing. 
And I'm going to knit through a few rows of this and I'll show you what it looks like in a few minutes. So the other thing I want to mention real quick is that you may find it helpful to put a beginning of the round marker um, in a lot of patterns and in a lot of things that I do, the tail for me kind of denotes the beginning of the round, or the, but that's not the case here because of the way that we cast on. The tail actually is on the opposite side of my beginning of round. So what I'll do with these type of socks when I get things pretty well established, I will take one of those little locking stitch markers and put one on the side of my magic loop that is the beginning of the round. So in this case, in this particular situation, I have reached the end and the beginning of my round. So I will go ahead and put one of those locking stitch markers like down here somewhere, just so I know which side is my beginning. And I don't, because for so many patterns in my brain, the tail denotes the beginning of the round, but that's not the case with these this particular method of knitting socks. I've completed rows one through 10, and now you can see the start of my toe. And I've added this little marker because this is the beginning of my round, not where the tail is. So currently I finished row 10 and I have 60 stitches, but I need more than that because I have measured my stitches per inch and the gauge that I need. So I would like to increase the toe up to 72 stitches. So in order to do that, I'm going to continue repeating rows 8 through 10 until I have four less than the total number I need. So I'm just going to carry on doing that and then I'll complete rows 11, 12, and 13 and I'll end up with 72 total. Okay, I've completed another set of rows 8, 9, and 10 and then that brought me to 68 stitches. Then I went ahead and did rows 11 and 12 which was just straight up netting plain two rounds and then row 13, which added another four stitches, and now I have 36 on each side. So that is going to work for me. Um, so now I'm going to choose the pattern that I want for 72 stitches. But for now, until next time, I just want you to complete the toe, and then we'll move on to the foot pattern. Okay, you're off knitting the toes, and I'd love to see photos of your projects in the Facebook and or the Ravelry group. Show us what you've got going on. It doesn't have to be Whip Wednesday for you to post in the groups. I'd love to see what you have going, and just keep in mind to tell me the yarn and that you're using and the pattern, customizable toe up. And next week, we're going to talk about choosing a pattern for the foot and how you might go about that. And I'll have some suggestions for you. If you don't want to have to pick something, you can just knit right along with me. And that's sometimes the easiest until you get the hang of it. So look forward to that. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.